Infinite C is infinitely good. Let's talk about it now. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about Infinite C, which came to theaters on March 10th, 2023, and is coming to Amazon on March 24th, 2023. It is a Portuguese indie sci-fi drama that is so, so good. I loved every second of it. It kind of was a perfect movie for me. So as you can tell, my hot take is I definitely think you should watch it. It is it's a beautiful indie sci-fi drama with a great setting, wonderful music, and a subtle tone that makes for kind of a haunting and wonderful experience. I just can't speak positively enough about this film and how much I enjoyed it. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the film. A few things I liked, a few things, well, no, there's nothing I didn't like, so we're just going to skip that. Talk a little bit about the ending because it is kind of confused and I want to just kind of convey my thoughts on the ending. I will keep it vague up until that point. So if you don't want to know what happened in this film, then you can keep watching until I get to the ending and I will tell you when I'm going to get into spoilers. So in Infinite Sea, you have two main characters. You've got Miguel played by Nuno Nolasco and Eva played by Maria Leta. And they are kind of stuck in this existence. The film is set on Earth where it seems like the world is starting to flood, the, uh, the the cities are kind of breaking down, and so you have this exodus to this nearby planet called Proxima Centauri. I guess it's four light years away, and so you just have people kind of shooting off there regularly. You see rockets going off, you know, pretty much at all hours of the day, but the people that don't get chosen to go to this new world are just kind of stuck in limbo. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of work. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of resources. Things are starting to dry up in general, despite the world being flooded. And so you have these people that are just kind of like left waiting, trying to figure out what to do next. And although it sounds like a kind of a boring premise, it is so beautiful. It is such a great kind of setting and storytelling experience. And I just loved every second of it. So... Things I liked about this movie. The first is the setting. Look, it's the perfect setting for like a near future world. And I really love how writer-director Carlos Amaral kind of made this into a subtle near future world. It reminded me a lot of Gattaca, where you have just kind of like a sci-fi aesthetic, but nothing that is too like overtly technical. Like you don't have any like crazy effects. You don't have a ton of like holograms and things like that. You don't have anything that will appear age or dated like the thing i love most about guy other than the movie's phenomenal it's one of my favorite movies of all time is that you can watch it now and it still feels futuristic even though technology has changed it's kind of caught up to a lot of the concepts there they still do a really good job of making it so that the setting can kind of advance with time at some point i'm sure you know our world will surpass that maybe unfortunately but what, you, what I love about it is there's nothing that really kind of draws your attention. There's no effects that you're like, oh, that's really rough. Because a lot of what they do is very subtle. They use kind of like old tech, but put like a new kind of spin or new kind of futuristic fresh coat on it. And so that's what this film did as well. The city is kind of industrial. It's, it's a lot of concrete. It's a big city. But there's not a ton of effects that are going to like distract you. There are some like big screens that are on there. And there are some computers. But the computers have this like old school feel to it so even though you've got like space travel and you've got definitely some new technological advancements the film feels understated in how it presents the world so you get this kind of like future feel without something that's going to feel dated in a few years the second thing i love about this film is the slow development this film has kind of like my favorite way to do storytelling it doesn't overtly tell you anything like you kind of start in the world and you learn things throughout, through context clues, through the conversations, through things that people say. It doesn't hold your hand and bash you on the head with like what's happening. You kind of have to figure it out as you're watching. And I love that kind of storytelling. It really feels more engaging. It feels like it's trusting the viewer. It doesn't feel like it has to, you know, spoon feed you the entire story. You experience it along with the characters and kind of learn about the situation as the film progresses. And a lot of that is due to the third thing I love, which is the writing. It, this is a fantastically written film for a lot of the reasons I liked in the slow development. It lets the viewer come to the conclusions. It, it kind of has good dialogue, good, interesting characters that will drop little tidbits here and there of information so that you can build a full picture throughout. And it's just so well written, even though it's in Portuguese and I read the subtitles, like even the subtitles are very well written, easy to kind of understand what's going on. And also we're able to convey some of the deeper themes and deeper emotions of this film. So again, hats off to writer-director Carlos Amaral. It was just a fantastically written film, fantastically shot film. Hey, I like this movie a lot. The fourth thing I love is the music. It has this kind of beautiful haunting music throughout 
a lot of it has like an electronic feel to it, but it definitely feels like the kind of songs you would have in a near future space drama. You got some electric beats. You've got some like opera style, like space opera style music. Um, and you all, and you also have like a lot of dreamlike music, but all the common threads in the music are that it's kind of dramatic and calming and also haunting at times. I just loved how the music helped to set the stage. Like this film has to convey that this world is empty and it's an indie film that has to do that. And you have to use these subtle uh, techniques to do that. And one of the things that really helps is the music. It definitely helps to kind of make this world feel both futuristic, but also empty and kind of alone. And the last thing I love is the cinematography. This film is very, very well shot. It definitely has a really nice use of light. It has a nice use of like camera angles. They do a really good job of like shooting the scenes to again, make this world feel empty. I don't know how they were able to get these like empty areas in the city for these shots, but they are beautiful because there's almost no one there. And you have these like sprawling industrial scenes with no one there. And also the film is called Infinite Sea. It's about kind of the, you know, the, the sea around them rising up, but also the, the infinite sea of space above them. And they have these really cool like shots where you've got those two themes merged. A lot of times when they're in like a swimming pool, you'll have bubbles from the pool around, but then that'll be cut in with like images of space. And they are so strikingly similar. It is just a beautiful thing to see. So again, I love the way that this film was made. I love the way that this film was shot. Definitely check it out. So I'm going to go into the ending or at least what I kind of think happened in the end. So if you don't want to know what happens in this film, I would turn this off now. Just know that Infinite Sea is available in theaters now, and it'll be available on Amazon on March 24th, 2023. Definitely check it out. It is a fantastic film. It is one of my favorites of this year, and I think it'll stay up there. So, so going into kind of the ending. So there are like three main kind of chapters, I guess, in this film, and they're kind of mixed together. So you've got the time on the earth with Miguel and Eva, where they kind of meet, they form a friendship, they kind of see each other's lives and try to figure out what to do next in their life. Then there is this time on a spaceship. Uh, there, there's not a lot of scenes of them, but you get a scene here or there of them being on the spaceship in this kind of like hypersleep as they're going to the other world. And then you also have some scenes with Miguel, at least, on this new world, on uh, Proxima Centauri. And you get to experience what his new life is like. And spoiler, it's not that good. So they're a little bit mixed between, and it's kind of tough to figure out exactly what's happening. But during the film, you do get some different clues. Uh, so what Miguel is trying to do at the start is he's trying to hack into the kind of registration system for this space voyage to Proxima Centauri. He's stuck. He doesn't really have anything uh, keeping him on earth and so he's trying to hack in to put his name on the list of people that can go when he when he first gets in his name is rejected he tries to change it but everything shuts down he ran out of power because the, the world is kind of dying so you have to like use batteries to power things you have to be very careful with your technology there's not a ton of new technology so sometimes he has to salvage things but in any event he doesn't do it the first time but as he's kind of like getting ready for his next attempt he has to brute force hacked into the server and just a side note it was very funny that the that the server he was hacking into was a local ip address i think that was just a silly mistake on the uh whoever was writing the programs part it was pinging like 192.168.1.2 which is just like a normal local ip address on your own network it should be have been pinging some external network but in any event not a big deal i still enjoyed kind of how the hacking uh looked and he is trying to brute force his way into this server so because he kind of got in once but then shut down he has to do it again but in the interim he meets eva she is i guess in the same area as him he is at a pool he like is just floating away in the pool uh, thinking about stuff or maybe he's trying to kill himself you're not sure eva comes in and saves him and that's how they kind of meet and form this friendship and form this very quick romance but during this time, you hear about aspects of the voyage uh, to Proxima Centauri. And one of the things they say is that when you are on this ship, you are suspended in like a hypersleep. So you're suspended in this liquid and you're sleeping, but all the consciousnesses on this ship are connected. So the guests kind of live out a life and can connect and interact that way. And so you start to wonder like, is he actually on Earth or is this this kind of in-between space where he's on his trip to Proxima Centauri and he's meeting other passengers that are on the trip as well and they are kind of like 
reliving this life in this interim on the voyage. And so I think I think that's actually what happened. I think he probably hacked in the Proxima Centauri, got his name on there, and took the voyage. But then on the voyage, he is like going back into his life and like just reliving it to kill time or meet new people. And while he's doing this, he meets Eva, who is probably also on this ship. Now they're able to interact. And so that's why they kind of meet for the first time in this pool setting, because they're both like in these suspended pools. So in their brain, or at least in the like in the in the system, that is kind of how they're meeting. And the film keeps coming back to this. Like there's a lot of like water motifs where they're in the pool and kind of suspended, and you get this like sea and space motif going on, which I really liked. But I think that's what's happening. I think that they are seeing him like remembering his life while he's on this ship and then him and Eva meeting and forming the relationship. The later stuff on Proxima Centauri, I don't know. It could just be what happened when he's there. Like it, it doesn't, it's not really clear what happens when the people get there. Uh, I think he was sent down to Proxima Centauri. So it could be like, in my mind, it could be two things. One, he sent down to Proxima Centauri and he's just kind of waiting out, waiting until he can try to find Eva again. Or this is also the program trying to have him meet other people who he's going to be working with on Proxima Centauri and kind of preparing him because Proxima Centauri does not look very nice. It's like this marshland, essentially, like a salt marsh or like a desert marsh kind of thing. It's wet. It's barren. It looks cold. It does not look very fun. And there is this kind of feeling that you get, especially with the conversations, that the people that are down there are not having a great time, but they are there paving the way for the next generation to do better. So I think if I had to guess, they're on the ship, they meet on the ship, and they're on their way to Proxima Centauri, and then you just get a glimpse of what it's going to be like on Proxima Centauri. And part of this is kind of like shown in the end, where you do get maybe some hints, but it could also be their simulation, because in the end, at the, at the very end, Eva and Miguel, you do get some images of them leaving the apartment, and there's a little post-it note that says, gone to Proxima B. So somehow they're either on the ship already or they hacked in and were able to go but what i really liked is that one of the things that they talk about before they leave is you know miguel says what do i do if we get there and you're not there and eva says find me after she says find me you see you see scenes of the world that miguel was living in everything is empty so it makes me think that maybe everyone there has already traveled to proxima centauri or is in process and that world is actually now empty. And then my love is like the absolute end of the movie where you see even Miguel on this beach and you just see this vast ocean in front of them, which again is a perfect motif for this film. And she whispers in his ear, find me on the other side of the infinite sea. And then they walk into the ocean. So I think that is kind of them either committing to this journey or realizing that their journey might almost be over. And she's telling him to like, go find her. So I think he will. I mean, I hope he will. He kind of is a little bit uh, lackadaisical in his life, but I think maybe Eva has finally like given him some fire. He, he seemed to be getting his life back in order when he met Eva. So I'm hoping he'll find her on Proxima Centauri. But we'll find it. You know, I don't think we'll ever find out. And that's part of the beauty of this film. We don't really know what happens. So let me know what you think. Let me know if I was completely off or if you agree with me. But most importantly, watch this film. It is a very, very good film. So that is Infinite Sea. It's available now in theaters and it's coming out on Amazon on March 24, 2023. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.